Welcome back to our monetary policy special. I have been speaking with perhaps uh, the most elite of uh, panelists. I have with me SBI Chairman Mr. Khara, uh, Prasanna, B. Prasanna, uh, the Head of Global Markets at ICICI, Somran Chakravarti, Chief Economist at City, and Rudul Sagar, former MPC member and uh, ex-RBI ED. Gentlemen, thank you very much for your patience. Uh, Mr. Khara, I know I can't hold your patience for much longer. Two very quick questions. Would you worry a little bit about the capex cycle? Are you, uh, sh you know, there are growth uh, clouds more than interest rate clouds. Uh, your thought on that? Well, I think uh, uh, it might have some momentary effect, but uh, nevertheless, uh, when it comes to uh, the investment capex cycle, uh, we have generally seen that once the capacity utilization inch towards seventy-five to eighty percent. Uh, there is a very clear visibility in terms of the investment expenditure. And if we look at uh, the 140 basis point of the increase in interest rate has already happened in the current year, but we have got a strong pipeline, which is still seen. And interestingly, almost about 70% of that pipeline is coming from the private sector. So that very clearly augurs well in terms of the likely scenario in terms of uh, as well as the investment expenditure is concerned. And another quick so question. I think, uh, yeah. I got a point, yeah, sir. Please, Another please. quick question before I let you go. Uh, this is not connected to policy, but uh, there is an expected loss, uh, credit loss uh, uh, discussion paper that is coming. So we will go towards INDAS. Uh, does that worry you if INDAS is imposed, say, uh, uh, FI25? I don't see it in FI24 if it is only a discussion paper now. But uh, you think uh, banking system is good to go for INDAS? I think if we look at the kind of uh, uh, gross NP and the, ten, uh, and the net NP which is there in the system today and the and the kind of PCR which the banking system is holding today, perhaps it is the right opportunity at uh, right and opportune time to really evaluate our migration towards NDS. It might have an impact uh, when it comes to the stage one and stage two, okay. but even stage three also, uh, there would be a, a re recalibration which will happen. Mm. And I think it is a, it's a welcome step which mm -hmm. RBA has initiated today in terms of uh, going for a discussion paper on the subject. Okay. It might have some impact for the provisioning, but I think eventually it will be in the overall good mm -hmm. in the long term. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Karar. Really kind of you to spare time for uh, me all the way from London. Uh, we, are, we have to now discuss what it immediately means to the market. Uh, this, this is a discussion paper and maybe a year down the line, uh, banks have to provide more, but we don't have to worry about it now. Uh, Prasanna, I wanted more your thoughts on where do you see the 10-year peak, the one-year OIS and more importantly, rupee. Uh, do you think the threat is over for now? Uh, so, Lata, on the bonds, uh, very quickly, I think uh, uh, we are back to the, uh, the to the grind, so to speak, with the global environment uh, being bearish. We've seen this policy, which has come on expected lines, and we've seen the governor uh, uh, kind of tick all the right boxes, very calming influence. So we've seen that behind us now. But now we'll have to again look at what's going to happen uh, in the U.S. as well as in the U.K. as well as what's happening to the bonds there. And uh, what has actually happened over the last month or two is the Indian bond deals have not really, uh, I would say, reacted as much as what it might have had, uh, basically because of the expectations on the global bond index inclusion. And a lot of uh, discussion has already happened under that, so I don't want to really, uh, you know, extend my arguments on that. But just to say that if the inclusion does happen and the announcement happens next week, then you would see, uh, you know, bond deals falling by around 15 basis points. And on the other hand, if it doesn't happen, we'll probably see uh, the borrowing program grinding bond deals uh, gradually going up. And the other thing which is affecting the bond deal curve is, of course, the uh, heightened uh, uh, liquidity shortage that uh, you were talking about uh, uh, in the sense that uh, now the interbank rates are tracking MSF rates and not really the reverse repo rate, as was the case nearly a year ago. And so to that extent, there is a natural grind up in terms of uh, where uh, bond deals are. So uh, and also to add to that, the fact that the SDL supply is also now coming and going to hit the market in the second yes. half. So all in all, I think uh, I would uh, call uh, a range of around 
735 to 760 if nothing happens on the global bond index. Okay. And I'm also capping it at 760 primarily because I do see a lot of uh, insurance-driven mm. bank, uh, 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 HTM-driven buying, which is happening when uh, uh, really yields go up. Cool. On the currency side, uh, Lata, I think, again, uh, over the last uh, uh, two to three weeks, especially post-CPI, it's really been dollar strength all the way because the interest rate uh, expectations on the Fed has really got repriced in the global markets. And during that period, we've seen the dollar appreciating against all the, uh, you know, the G7 currencies uh, quite substantially. And INR has also, you know, kind of fallen prey, much less though uh, than what the others are. Uh, so having said that, I do think that the period of dollar bullishness is still going to remain globally. But on the other hand, I will also say that incrementally there are, you know, more and more uh, uh, reasons to be less bearish on the INR uh, beyond this level. Maybe a level of 82 half is what possibly it can go. And uh, I'm basing myself on the fact that the dollar strength can actually start to wane okay. as we go forward. Because the arguments of differential interest rates, differential growth and differential safe haven demand, which is what has driven the dollar so far will probably, uh, you know, kind of get less and less okay. important uh, as we go forward. Well, uh, since we have a city economist with us, uh, that question to you, uh, Sabiran. Uh, you know, there was a seminal uh, mood shift in the currency today, not entirely due to the monetary policy as much as the dollar peaking off. Uh, is 83 on the cards or is 82 likely to be, uh, you know, for some time? Well, our global uh, uh, strategists, they believe that uh, there is still some uh, dollar strength left in the system. And that's why uh, we are in the short term thinking of even 83 happening. Uh, but this could be a very uh, orderly move in the currency markets uh, rather than uh, being knee jerk in nature. Uh, we, at least at this point of time, feel that the worst of balance of payment uh, situation is behind us. Uh, second half, both the current account deficit as well as overall BOP uh, should look slightly better, giving RBI a bit more wiggle room to operate with. Uh, and on top of it, as the governor has mentioned today, that a large part of the FX reserve decline is on the back of uh, valuation adjustments and not directly interventions. So these valuation adjustments can work on the other side also. If what uh, Prasanna was referring to, mm. if for some reason the Fed pivots and yields come off, uh, then that automatically leads to our FX reserves optically looking higher. And the same can happen if the dollar cycle turns at some point of time over the next six months or so. Mm. So all in all, I, I feel less worried on that front of oh. RBI's ability to defend the currency. Okay, that's uh, very welcome uh, if you think you are slightly less worried. Uh, Mridul, the most important question to you really is how will uh, the Reserve Bank look at that 4% target or rather the MPC? Uh, you know, go, they have to write this uh, letter to Parliament uh, defending their inability to bring uh, interest rates below 6% for three quarters. It's going to perhaps remain above 6 as you yourself said, uh, for one more quarter. Uh, you know, will they not attempt 4% uh, uh, at all? Is four to six going to be their target? Yeah. Um, uh, Lata, if you allow me, let me first quickly react to the discussion which was going on before sure. uh, this thing. In my view, there's the global financial markets are still into choppy waters. I mean, it's too early to sort of say the Fed has peaked. Uh, you know, Barry Eichengreen and NCA took the call of 5% terminal rate for the Fed. We still sort of believe that. And uh, there is still uh, on the currency market, so much is happening. I mean, uh, you look at the yen dollar volatility. I mean, from uh, the fall, uh, it's back to 145, 144 levels uh, after the uh, uh, Jackson Hole speech of uh, Powell. Uh, so dollar strengthening is something we can't really say is over. I mean, uh, we, we still have to wait and watch how uh, this pans out uh, in, in, in terms of it. And I think the EM currencies will still need to bear some some sort of a onslaught uh, in the coming period. Uh, equity markets correction is also not over, in, in my view. You, you know, uh, there's some work which has come from the Chicago University uh, earlier this month, which shows that the investor habit formation is such uh, that we, we could see a uh, 
short-term interest rate uh, uh, rise would lower output in consumption levels, uh, but will raise risk aversion and amplify the global shock. Okay. So the house price bubbles could burst in places, uh, Australia being uh, one of the immediate uh, evidence of it. Oh. Uh, so I think we need to be very trained and very nimble and flexible for it, as the governor had really explained okay. in uh, speech also. So at the moment, 4% uh, may not be the immediate possibility. So I, I think it's okay. I, I don't think there needs to be a stigma attached to RBI explaining the letter. These have been very special circumstances yes. in which inflation has gone up. Uh, so it what what one needs to watch out is how credibly the central bank explains uh, why it has gone up, what it will do to bring it down. Uh, uh, so these are very critical uh, Absolutely. Uh, next, next forecast. Okay. Uh, so it's okay if uh, inflation stays high into the next year, but that only means that the monetary policy needs to remain tight okay. for some time now. Fine. Point, point taken entirely that uh, in special circumstances, stability is more important financial stability than perhaps uh, adhering to, uh, you know, uh, the, the targets that were set in more normal times. Uh, it's been a most enlightening discussion. Uh, Mr. Kara, uh, Prasanna, Samiran and Mridul Sagar, thank you very much for joining me. We wrap up on this special broadcast on the monetary policy.